Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Stir up thy power, O Lord, and with great might come. Come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let thy bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee in the Holy Ghost be honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah, chapter 5, beginning at verse 2. You, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. Here and the Celestia. Let us now read together Psalm 80, the first seven verses. Hear, O thou shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a sheep. Thank you. 
Holy Gospel according to Luke. Now, I'm going to start reading the Gospel a little before what's in your sheets, but you can listen along and, and enjoy a few extra verses of Scripture. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child left in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb left for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham, and to his descendants forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. You may be seated. So I began reading somewhat before the Magnificat. Because the truth is that as I read that longer passage, I am struck by the fact that there is not only a canticle of Mary, there is also a canticle of Elizabeth. They fit together. And they should be considered together. Nowhere else in scripture that I know are two women so engaged in a, in a holy and a sacred conversation with one another in beautiful poetry, praising God for not only what God has done, but what God is doing in this very moment and will continue to do throughout the future. It is heady to listen to. It has to be thrilling if we open our eyes and not only listen 
to the beauty of the words, but the message that they proclaim and teach us. Now Mary has just heard from Gabriel an ask. And Mary has said yes to Gabriel, I indeed will be the mother of the Son of God. And immediately thereupon, Mary puts together a few things, perhaps in a bag or a scarf, and she heads to see her Aunt Elizabeth. How beautiful that is. She needs a woman who is of the older generation, as it were, to help ground her. Because the truth is, we oftentimes say yes in our life, and it is only after having said yes that we start thinking through what our yes means what it means in a big picture, what it means for us in our individual life, and how everything now is changed. And so Mary hastens to see Elizabeth and no sooner walks through the door than Elizabeth sings this beautiful canticle. Elizabeth already knows the good news that Mary is going to share. And the child in Elizabeth's womb, John, leapt for joy. In that moment, Elizabeth could feel the quickening of the infant that she carried whom she knew by a prophet was going to have an immeasurable impact on the world and the people of Israel. That is not only a statement for the ages, it is a statement to Mary herself. It is both a kind of bracing witness, but it is also comfort to Mary because she starts understanding something that she's been mulling over in her mind during the entire walking trip from Bethlehem to Nazareth. And she's now putting the pieces together. They're still scary pieces. She's still young. The world is outside of her kin. But wisdom and understanding is collecting themselves inside her heart and mind. And Elizabeth, for Mary, puts together some of the pieces, how they fit. And then Mary, in response, sings that beautiful canticle that we know as the Magnificat. And the verb tenses, and I have to tell you I read this because I don't speak Greek, but the verb tenses suggest that the things that Mary is saying about the blessings that will be occurring in the world because of the birth of the Son of God, the Savior and Redeemer, would they, as they need to be, they are going to take place in that very moment, but they are going to take place of every, in every day, in every moment yet to come. It is a blessing for both now and then. And Mary talks about the fact that from that moment on, everything has changed. 
God is fulfilling God's ancient promises and making everything different, more blessed, charged with an internal energy. The earth literally moves. Afterwards, Mary and Elizabeth, no doubt, embrace each other, wish each other well, catch up, and decide how Mary can be helpful during Elizabeth's pregnancy. For the entire length of my ordained ministry here in Baltimore, I have tried to meet every Wednesday with a group of clergy that meets at St. Mark's Church down on St. Paul Street. It's a kind of come as you are. It's gone on for longer than the 18 years that I've been here. But it is everything that you would wish for as you are prayerfully praying and preparing a sermon. But it's a colleague of people who lift up both the word and you. Last Wednesday, there were perhaps a dozen people in the room, all clergy, most of them younger than I, but I'm getting used to that, that most everyone in the crowd that I'm amongst is going to be younger than I. Three men and the rest of the table was filled with young women who were just getting started on their clergy calls. And we three men had the good sense to keep quiet. There was such wisdom from the women around the table as they contemplated and worked out aloud with their voices these two canticles and what they meant, the canticles meant, to them as women, as people that had wombs that could understand in a kind of particularity all of the things that were happening in Elizabeth and Mary's bodies, both physically and spiritually. As I said, it was like being in a room of prophetesses because they had such a personal wisdom about what was going through Elizabeth and Mary's mind and how they both knew. And you could tell that they knew it because of the way they sang their individual canticles, that they understood what God has done, what Jesus and John will do and how it has not only affected their lives, but will affect every life lived from that moment on. But they were not so much looking at the world view, the women at the table that I was sitting listening to. They were, they were talking about the personal, individual witness, prophecy, grace, that these two births were going to mean and what they meant to Mary and Elizabeth in particular. Mary and Elizabeth did not know what was going to happen long term. They knew that they were going to be mothers and that these two sons were going to be special. But how that was going to unfold was still a mystery. And among the things they are singing about 
is yielding to God. Yielding to God what God's will was going to be. And helping that along and not standing there in the way. You see, that's the lesson, I think, for all of us. God, through Jesus, the Son, the Redeemer, is something that is a force so large that we ourselves should first approach it with a kind of sitting watching, putting the pieces together in what it all means, and then how we might help. Because God is doing what God is doing not to make spectators out of us, though we are that, but rather to make participants of, of us, change agents, people who have listened to the word and who understand that the work is not God's alone, but the work here on earth, as John Kennedy said in his inaugural, the work is ours. And that means something. And we need to tease and noodle it out and then get to it. Because if we see something going on in the world and it's new, it's unfamiliar to us, but it sounds right, it sounds like it is true, then our then our response to that and our commitment is this. We're experiencing, we're seeing something new. And then we need to roll up our sleeves and do something new too. Something that we've never, ever done before. We are the newness in which we live. Let us bless the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the God of the Father before all the worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of the very God, the God of not made, he being one of substance with the Father. I do all things for me. 
almighty and ever living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. Receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with a spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, and Eugene and Robert, our bishops, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also, so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joseph, our president, Lawrence, our governor, and Brandon, our mayor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O oh Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor those commended to our prayers and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We pray especially for Natalie and for the people of Haiti and the people of Afghanistan. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially thy servants, our benefactors, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of Our Lady, Blessed John, and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, Ye who, duly, ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and attend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and make your humble confession to God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, God of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our natural sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by God's word and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly in thy wrath. Remembrance of them is grievous unto 
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. The peace of the Lord be always with you.